All right, wonderful. We are ready to start. Good day, everyone. And as you as you know, the topic for today is a call to action. So when visitors come to your site, they you generally want them to do something, right? You want them to sign up for a newsletter, or you want them to buy a product, or you want them to engage with more content on your site. Or you maybe would like them to join an event, whatever it may be. Now, in these situations, you have to prompt a response from a visitor. And of course, the best way to do that is with a call to action. So what is a call to action? A call to action is an element on your site that asks people to take specific action. And there's usually a clickable button or a sign up a sign up section involved. And as you can see in this example, um, it says more, um, more info. So I think one of the, the most important things to remember is that with a call to action, you want to take people deeper into your site, right? Usually when, um, when somebody opens a site, they might leave the site really quickly. So of course, your aim is to get people to read more of your content, or to, um, to delve deeper into your site. So I thought, let's talk about a few tips before I show you an example website of, um, of a company that I think have used it, used call to actions really well. And then I'm also gonna show you some demos. All right, so a few tips to keep in mind. Number one, make your call to action stand out. A call to action is, of course, about using persuasive language, but it's also about good design. So you want your call to action to, to, to pop and it needs to catch someone's um, it needs to it needs to catch someone's eye. Next is you want to create a sense of urgency. So depending on the context, um, especially when you when you're selling something, you want to persuade visitors to realize that they might miss out on something if they, if they don't respond now or book now or shop now. And coupled with that is using action words, verbs, doing words, words, words such as download, shop, subscribe, um, et cetera. And then the last thing I wanted to mention was try using the first person. It makes it personal as if the reader is being spoken to directly. So, for example, instead of using book ticket, use something like book my ticket. And as you'll see in this example, plan your adventure. All right. So the first example that I that I wanted to show you was this website called it's sliderobes.co.uk. If I look at this website. I think they have used call to actions really effectively. They've used it throughout their site. And um, Laura and I actually spoke about it at the start, but they've added the call to actions in their navigation menu to, to make it more prominent as well. So there you'll see design appointment, request brochure, and then discover bedrooms. And yeah, actually in this slider, if you, you keep going, you've got different call to actions. Now, if we scroll through the, the home page, you will notice here at the bottom, you can also click on book design appointment or request brochure. The slider robes experience, sign up for inspiration, sign up. And even if you now go up again, and let's say for example, you click on home office. and you scroll down, you will see this call to action being repeated as well. So I definitely think their marketing team got, got involved here and they've used it really well. So for example, create your mood board, book design appointment. Yeah, so I think this is a, a prime example. And then let's also go to wordpress.org. I think wordpress.org, um, also, also uses um, 
a call to action quite well with the the, the blue background and the white text here, get WordPress. When you go to the homepage, get WordPress, explore the WordPress editor, find inspiration. And then these are also calls to actions. If you think about it, learn with WordPress, find support, dig into code, etc. All right, so we've looked at some nice examples. Let's get into how to how to create them. So I'm going to make my way to my, my test website. And the first example that I want to show you is this one. This is a, a call to action I created in the block editor, no plugins. Let's click on preview. All right, so I'm going to show you how I created this call to action where I actually want somebody to subscribe to um, my newsletter. And of course, to subscribe to my newsletter, they've got to share their email address. So this is a different type of call to action. And I actually used a, um, a forms plugin to do that. So let me show you how I did that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my pages. I'm going to say add new. And I'm going to call this call to action one. All right, so the first thing we are going to add is we are going to add a columns block. And we're going to select two equal columns. Then I'll open up my list view. I will select the column, the parent block, and I will select full width. All right, now that I've got my full width, I'm going to start, start adding content um, in the left column. All right, so the first thing I want to add is I want to add a, a heading. And I said, we make your dreams come true. Exclamation mark. Let's make that bold. Let's open our sidebar settings because I actually want to change the, the size as well. So let's make that um, 70 pixels. Okay, and then below that, I'm going to add some text. So let's just copy from here to save time because we're kind of recreating this, right? So I'm going to copy that text and I'm going to paste the text there. All right, and now below that, we want to add our forms plugin. So let me just talk about that for a moment. I'm going to publish this page for now. And if we make our way to plugins and we say add new, you can type in forms. And there are many different form plugins to, to use. So there's WP Forms, Contact Form 7, Ninja Forms, etc. So you can use whichever one um, you prefer. Now I've used WP Forms for my first example. Now, you will notice it says there's newsletter sign up form. So if you click on add new, you can start a blank form. So let's say blank form, for example. And now you can just add the fields um, that, you, that, you, that you would want in your, in your form from a number, name, email, even capture. All right. Or that actually already provided you with a template newsletter sign up form. So I'm going to say use this template. It's got the name, first name, last name, email, and then a submit button. So now we can say save. Now we can make our way back to our page that we just started creating, right? So now we know we've got our, our template. So let's open it up here. Now, before we add that, we want to say subscribe to our newsletter. Okay, so I'm going to put that in capital letters because I want it to stand out. I'm going to make it bold. And let's go to our sidebar settings and change it to 30 pixels. All right, and now below that, 
we are going to add our form. And I'm going to type in WP Forms. And now you can select the one that we've just created. So newsletter sign up form. And Amir said, I saw your question. Yes, the recording of the session will be available at the end. All right, so now we've added subscribe to our newsletter, we've added our form, and at the bottom, we want to add, let's just look at our example again. We want to add the social icons. Okay, so I'm going to say, Okay, I'm going to say dash social icons. All right, and now if you click on the inserter, we can add them. Let's say we want Twitter, and then in this um, in the block toolbar, ensure that you select the parent block again. We can add Facebook, parent block again, and Instagram. All right, let's just um, add enter so we can see a bit better. All right, now I'm going to add the URL to your social media platform there. And there, you'll notice it actually changes color when you add your URL. Okay, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to select that. All right, and let's say we want this a bit larger. We want this to be large. And now we've got our left column. And I'm happy with that. Now let's go ahead and add our image in the right column. So I'm going to add, click on the insert there, click on image. And I've already uploaded my image. So I'm going to click on the media library and I'm going to select this image. Okay. Now, if you look at my example, you will notice that I've actually added a, a little border around. And the other thing you will notice is that the image is in the middle. Let me show you how I did that. So first off, you select your, your image block or your image. And then there where it says border, you can say, let's say you want a one pixel border or a two pixel border. And in my case, I added a, a 10 pixel border. So now you, you've got that nice black border around there. Now, how do we change the position of the image to the middle? Well, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to select the, the right column in your list view. So let's select the right column. And now you will notice if you click on the block toolbar, it says change vertical alignment. And now we can say align it to middle. And there it, it, it pops it to the middle. So now let's close this. And there we go. So the only thing that we have left is to change the, the background color of our column, columns block. So let's again select the parent block, select the columns block, open our sidebar settings, click on background. And when you click on here, you can actually set your own custom color if you don't want to use a default color. And there you can actually add a hex code. So what I did is I actually, um, as you will notice, here's the Colosseum. I actually Googled what is the color of the Colosseum. And I and I, I Googled for a hex code that would kind of a color that would that would go with the Colosseum. So um, I got a hex code for that. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to add the hex code, which is D9 D8. C8. And there I can also copy the X code. So I'm just copy this because I want to use it again. So I've changed the background color of the of the columns block. But now I also want to change the I want to change the color of my social icons. So again, let's make sure. Let's just remove, okay, let's just make sure we select the parent block. So I've selected the parent block. And in our sidebar settings, you can change the icon color and the icon background. So for the icon color, I'm going to add a custom color, the same as the background of the columns block. 
And of remember, I already copied the hex, hex code, so I'm just going to remove that and paste the hex code there. And now you will notice it's got the same color, the icon color. And then for the icon background, I'm going to select black. And voila, we are done. We can just remove that. And now let's update and then preview in a new tab. And there we have. So one thing that you can still do as well if you wanted to. Okay, so let's go back and select the, the columns block and add a bit more space around the content. And we do that using padding. So let's just go to dimensions and let's add some more padding, let's say six. Update. And now we can preview it again. And you will notice we actually have some more, more space around our content. Any questions about, about this? We can even see what this looks like on the front end. And in mobile. So let's click on inspect. And now we can actually see what this looks like on mobile as well. All right, so let me show you how I created a different call to action using the cover block. All right, so let's go to call to action two. Click on preview and let's see what I did here. So here I've actually used um, a cover block. And um, yeah, I'm originally from South Africa. So we've got a lot, a lot of wildlife parks in South Africa and rhinos are very dear to me. Um, and yeah, I decided to create this one um, because I know there's, yeah, rhinos need a lot of support. And I thought this is a good example where you actually, where you're actually asking people to, to donate to the course. All right. So let me show you how I did this using the, the cover block. All right. So let's update it here. Let's make our way back to pages, click on add new. Let's call this call to action two. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start doing is we're gonna add a cover block. Now, the wonderful thing about the cover block is that you can add an overlay or you can add text over images or videos. And that's what makes the cover block so powerful. Right, so let's first select our image, and there's the rhino. Again, select the parent block, and I'm going to change the alignment to full width. I'm also going to change the content position. So next to that, I'm going to change the um, the content position top left. All right, so I've changed the, the, the text to top left, right? And the next thing I'm going to select is toggle full height. Okay, and now we can start adding our content. So first off, I'm gonna say save the Rhino. And then I'm going to say bold. And of course, I want to make the text larger. So let's take, oh, let's turn that to pixels and make this 80 pixels. All right, nice and nice and large and, and easy to see. Okay. And then below that, we are going to add our text. So again, let's just copy this text. All right. But now you will notice that it covers the whole, um, it covers the entire cover block, but that's not what we want. We want the text to be on the left, especially thinking about uh, um, like seeing this page or, or seeing this on mobile on a mobile device. So let me just click undo. To do that, I'm actually going to add a columns block.
And I'm going to select three equal columns. And now I'm going to add the content in a left column. And that will ensure that my content stays on the, um, on the left. And then, of course, below that, we are going to add our buttons block. Okay, so before I work on my buttons block, let's also make this text larger. I'm going to select this text and let's change this to, let's say, 27 pixels. Okay, and now for our buttons block, we want people to donate, right? So I'm using this verb action word, donate. And I'm going to change the background color of my buttons block to white. And I'm going to change the text to black. Let's make that bold as well. And let's change the size of our buttons block to, to large as well. And now, if we look at the radius, we can, let's say we say 10 pixels radius. It just removes that, those, those, those corners. So it's not a, not a proper um, rectangle. Or we can say 100 to give it that rounded effect. So I'm going to keep it at 100 pixels. There's two more things that I want to do. Okay, let's just make sure that's to the left. There's actually three more things that I want to do. As you will notice at the moment, there's quite a lot of space here between Save the Rhino and the text. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. I'm going to select the paragraph block and the columns block, and I'm going to stack them together. I'm going to group them and stack them together. Okay, now I'm going to select my cover block. And I'm going to change the opacity, the overlay opacity to 20. At the moment, it's 50, and you, you can see it's very dark. So let's just change that to, to 20. And now you can also see the, the rhino clearer as well. We can also add some padding to add some more space. And then lastly, we're going to change the position of the focal point picker. And that is spe specifically for mobile devices. So I'm going to drag it to the left a bit, just to make sure that the text is not directly over the rhino. So I've moved my focal point picker to the left so that the text is also um, a bit more to the left. All right, so let's hit Publish. And let's see if we're happy with what this looks like at the moment. Yeah, there we go. And now we can preview in a new tab. And there we have our call to action that I've created using a cover block. OK, so the way I reduced the space was I stacked them together. Um, but of course, you can also use the, the block spacing if, if to if two blocks are grouped together, you can use the block spacing um, feature below dimensions as well. OK, so um, let's see what this looks like when I click on inspect and I, I view it from a mobile device. So let's see. So as you will notice, I've I moved the focal point picker a bit to the left. So now you've got Save the Rhino, and the text is also more to the left. So yeah, I think that looks really nice um, on mobile. Now, there was a question about overlay. If I go back here, and I select my, um, my, cover, my cover block, and I click on the settings. Kimmy, you will notice that if you click on overlay, you can add a different color overlay. And this relates to the overlay on, on my image. So at the moment, it's black. 
but you can change it to white or green or whatever it may be. And in the sidebar settings as well, you will find the focal point picker that we just looked at. And of course, when you select a block, you can use the, the block toolbar to change the alignment. So I hope I answered all those questions. Okay, any any questions or suggestions about about this? All right. Now, of course, I created all of these myself using the block editor, but there are easy ways to um, to find patterns um, to modify as well. Now, I'm going to show you in the next two examples how I've actually used patterns and then changed it to something that I um, that I like or that suits my needs. Let me show you the example of my first pattern. So let's go to call to action. And this is the first one that I want to show you. So. I can create this in two ticks. Let me show you how I did that. OK, I'm going to, of course, create a new page. Let's call this pattern one. And now we're going to make our way to the WordPress website, the WordPress.org website. And if you hover over download and extend, you can click on patterns. And now where it says search patterns, I'm going to type in call to action. And we can actually find patterns that are calls that are that are um, created as a call to action. And now there's many patterns to scroll through. And of course, when you add these to your website, you can just modify them as you please. All right. So I think I found mine on page two. Yes, there we go. So here's the one I wanted, image and call to action. So I'm going to click on copy, make my way back to my site, and then click on paste. Okay, so here we have a pattern which we can now modify and change um, as we please. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this image and I'm going to replace it with my own image from my media library. OK. So now I'm also going to select the left column. I'm going to select the left column and then I'm going to push it to the right. And I'm trying to, let me just go there. Just want to copy that text. So it was, um, or I can just type that in, hey. Okay, so instead of that, I'm going to say innovator, entrepreneur, and adventure seeker and the last thing i want to do is i'm going to select my button and select outline and there we go so i have copied a pattern and in a minute or two i've changed it to meet my my own requirements so yeah, there's many options, many patterns um, that you can that can that you can search for and and use and modify. Let me show you the second one that, that I created. Okay, again on the animal theme. So the one thing that I that I wanted to show you first is. I'm using this social this social icon block again. So instead of recreating it, 
let's be smart and re use reusable blocks. Now, um, usually when you um, when you click on when you click on something, right? When you click on on um, on a block, you can create a reusable block. So if you click on the three vertical dots, you can say create reusable block. So let's do let's do that, and let's call it social icons two. Okay, so I'm gonna save that now. And let's recreate this using a pattern. So I'm going to leave there, create a new page, and let's call this pattern two. And then make our way back to um, the WordPress.org website to the to the patterns directory, and scroll through some more patterns. And I think this one I found on page three. Yes, there we go. So here's the pattern that I want. So I'm going to click on copy, make my way back, and again, I'm just going to paste. So there is the um, the pattern. Now you'll see this is just dummy text. It says Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. So let's start there. Let's remove that and add our reusable block. Okay, so. To, to, to add a reusable block, I'm going to click on the insert top left. Now, here you can add blocks, patterns, and reusable blocks. Now, you can find some patterns here as well, but I went to the pattern directory. And um, so these patterns are only patterns that come with your theme. And um, of course, in the pattern directory, you can search for something like, like um, call to action. And if you click on reusable block, you will find all the blocks that you have created as reusable blocks and I'm going to now select the one that I that I've already created to save us some time. Okay, great. So I've added that. Now let's change the image. Replace this with the giraffe. Now if you were wondering how they got this really cool effect, you use the radius to do that. So let me show you, if you select the image and open the sidebar settings, you will notice they have changed the radius top left to 500, that makes it round, and bottom left, that makes it round. So you can play with the radius if you want um, to change the way your, your image appears. Okay, now we can start changing the the color and the text. So 20 years of coding experience. No, we're going to say 20 years of Safari experience. And we code your future. No, we'll say um, we plan your adventure. OK. And now we're going to change the color of the text. Now, I also looked up a hex code, a color of a giraffe, and I found a color that works for me. So I'm going to change the, the color to a custom color. And this time it's going to be C97F4E. Great. And now I've changed the color, and now I can just copy the hex code again. Copy, go to your adventure. And then change it there. Click on custom. Remove the Xcode and paste the other Xcode. Okay, let's just remove that gap. Now we can still change the, the buttons block because, oops, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so this buttons block, if you look at background color, at the moment, it's got a gradient, but I want a solid color. I want it to be black. I also want read more to be bold. And I want to change the size to medium. And there we go. We have used the pattern and changed it to what we want.
John was asking about, can you make a block that you created into a pattern and save it onto your computer as a pattern? Absolutely. So if you look at this one that I've just created, right? Call to action two. No, sorry, that was pattern two. If you open your list view, you can actually select this entire parent block. Remember, all of this is within one block. Now you can click on the three vertical dots and you can create a reusable block. Create, and let's call this giraffe and click save. Now, it looks, it looks a bit weird now because you've saved it as a reusable block, but don't fret. If you preview it on the front, it will still look like it's supposed to. But now, if I go to a page and I create a new page, new page, and then I add it, I can click on the insert the top left, go to reusable blocks, and there's the giraffe one, and I can actually, I've saved it in my own pattern or my own reusable block, and I can add it there. Now, let's say you want this to be different than the previous one. You can click on the three vertical dots and now say convert to regular blocks, because if you update it here, it will be updated everywhere else you've used it. So you don't want that. If you want, just want it to change here, you say convert to regular blocks, and now you can. You can change it as you please here. Yeah. Okay. We've got time for, for one more. Is that all good? Okay. Cool. So now I want to show you this example, flooring solutions. So I'm going to show you how I created this, but then also how to add a link to actually make an appointment. So let's first create this. Okay, let's say floors. Now, the first thing you guessed that the first thing we're going to add is a columns block. Okay, we're going to select two equal columns. Again, we're going to make sure we select the parent block. We're going to change it to full width. And then in the left column, we are going to say at home design visit. Okay, let me just go back to the other one that I can just copy the text, right? just to save some time. Okay, let's copy that. Copy that text. Okay, so at home, visit, let's copy the text. And now let's change that. Make it bold. Open our sidebar settings. Let's say 40 pixels. All right. And then below that, we are going to add a buttons block. And we are going to say, book my appointment. Let's make it more personal. We use first person. And then I'm going to select the outline style. And then on the right side, I'm going to add an image from my media library. And this is what I wanted to show you now using your radius. I'm going to change the way this, this image appears by changing the radius. So when you click on unlink radius here on the right, you can say, I want the top right to be 100, and I want the bottom right, bottom left to be 100. And now we, we change the way it appears, and I kind of like that. Okay, let's just make sure when we select the parent block, we also add some more padding. So this time I'm going to say I want to set a custom. I'm going to change the 
the unit of measurement, let's say to rem, and let's say 5.5. And you'll note you notice that it that we added some more more space, some more padding around the um, the text. All right. Um, is this medium? Yeah. Okay. So the next thing that you want to do, and this is something a question somebody else asked about block spacing. Look at the at the moment you'll see there's not a lot of space between these two um, columns. But if you select your your columns block, right, and you go to dimensions and you click on the three vertical dots, you can actually open. You can click on block spacing, and now you can add some more space between your your two columns. And there you can add some more space using block spacing. Okay, let's publish that. And now what we're going to do is we are going to use the duplicate option. So we're going to select this columns block. We're going to click on the three vertical dots and duplicate. All right, so now we have the same the same columns block that we can just modify now. So let's first replace this image. Okay, so replace that image. It will have the same style though. And to move that image to the other side, we first have to open our list view again, select the right column, and then shift that column to the left. All right, and this was actually called testimonials. Testimonials, and the buttons block was actually learn more. Okay, there we go. But now I want to show you if you click on book my appointment, where do you want visitors to go? But we're going to use a forms plugin for that again. Okay, so if we make our way back to plugins, you can look up a, a new plugin form. This time I'm going to use Ninja Forms. So it works the same as, as most others. So I'm going to say add new and I'm going to say blank form. And I'm going to say, okay, we want to make um, to people to book an appointment. So let's first let them choose. I'm going to use the check checkbox list and say, if you click here, you'll notice that you can edit it. Let's say people can say, I want you to come to my home at home, or no, I actually want it to be online. There's the two options, and we just remove that. And then done. And if you click on the plus, we can add some other fields now. So let's say we want people to share their first name, last name, address, city. You'll notice it just adds it when you click on it. Zip code. Did that add? Zip code and then email. Okay, so now we've added all the fields that we, we wanted. Okay, now let's say done, publish, and we can call this book now, and then publish it. Okay, so now we're going to make our way back to pages. And I've created a page called free design appointment because this is the page that I want people to go to. So for now, for this example, I'm just going to remove this. Okay, so my heading is free design or my, my page title is free design appointment. Request your free no obligation design appointment with one of our talented local designers, either at home or online via video chat. Now below that, I'm going to add my form. So I'm going to type in Ninja. Ninja form, and you can select the form that we just created. It was book now. So now if somebody comes to this page, they can say, oh, I want an at-home visit. 
and they can add their details and the company can contact them or you can contact them. So now I'm going to update this. I'm going to click on preview because I want to grab this URL. I'm going to grab that URL because that is the, the home of this page. I'm going to grab that copy. And then we are back on this page. Now, this is the book my appointment button, right? So I'm going to select that, click on link, and now paste that URL there because that's where I want people to go to if they click on book my appointment, right? Great. So now let's preview this page. Okay, so this might just be an element on a on a page, right? And people might say, okay, book my appointment. I want to book an appointment. And if they click on that, it will take them to this page where they can say, okay, I'm going to fill in all my details as I want them to contact me. All right, so that's all we have time for today. So 